Hey everybody and welcome back to yet another Minecraft Redstone video. Today I have something pretty cool to show you guys. What I went ahead and did is I took a real life vending machine and I did my best to replicate that in Minecraft. Now I did this only using Minecraft survival friendly redstone which was pretty difficult um, but in theory you could actually build this thing in your survival friendly server. It looks exactly like a vending machine does in real life and it even operates pretty much exactly how a vending machine would operate. It's not very practical in Minecraft, but it still was such a fun redstone build to build, and I can't wait to show you guys how it works and, you know, how to even use it. So anyway, let's just go ahead and order something from the vending machine, why don't we? Um, the first thing we can do is look in the glass cage here, and we can actually see what is up for sale. So um, over here... Up top here, you can actually see all the different numbers for each item. But starting here, we have a golden apple, we have some iron horse armor, a little emerald, some dragon breath potions, an elytra, a gold block, um, the new decoration end crystal block. We got some golden horse armor and a nether star. Now up above each of the items, that is the item number, and we're going to go ahead and use that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and read some of these signs, because this sort of shows you how to actually use the machine. So the first sign says, write um, your number on a piece of paper and put it in the dropper after paying. And then down here it says, each item cost one diamond, place, place in dropper below. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to need are some diamonds, because that is the currency that this vending machine is using. So before we want to buy an item, we're going to have to go ahead, take our diamond and place it in the dropper below. There we go. We'll go ahead, push the button, and what that's going to do is the machine will suck away our diamond and um, we are ready to actually put in the number. So this is the coolest part of the vending machine and uh, honestly what a majority of the redstone behind it is actually working on. So here we go. The next step is you need to grab yourselves a piece of paper and then you have to write the number of the item on the paper and put it in the dropper. So, let's go ahead, huh, well another star for a diamond, that is a pretty ridiculous price. So let's go ahead and buy ourselves another star. So the nether star has the item number 103. So we're gonna go ahead, take our piece of paper, and we are going to write number 103. There we go, we have a piece of paper with number 103 on it now, and we'll go ahead and place it in this dropper this time. We'll push the button and our order has been placed. So it has to do a little bit. Um, that little piece of paper has to go through a lot of different hoppers, but eventually it will reach the nether star guy and it should dispense us one little nether star. There we go. Now the nether star is in the little area that we have to actually reach in. So to do that, you flip this lever, some pistons move some blocks, and then we can pick up our nether star and we'll put those blocks back in place. So that is how a purchase is made at the vending machine. Was that cool or what? It is so cool how you actually have to write in um, your little own number for your own item and then push the button and then it'll actually dispense it out to you just like a vending machine in real life. You know, usually in real life, you would put in a dollar into the machine, then you would punch in the item number, hit enter, and it'll give you, you know, a soda. And that's pretty much what we built here, which was such a fun idea. So let's go ahead and buy a couple other things. Um, something cool about this vending machine is it can actually store in any number of diamonds that you can put into it. So let's just go ahead and put in two diamonds in the machine at once. And the cool thing about that is the machine will actually count that you have two credits in the machine and it will let you purchase two different items, which is pretty cool. Um, another cool feature is if we put in something that isn't an actual number, like we don't number in the paper correctly or something like that, and we just put in a blank piece of paper, um, the machine will actually take that, um, know that it isn't one of the nine items up there, and it won't actually charge you for a credit, which is pretty cool. So there's just a lot of different error checking going around, making sure that you do indeed um, type in one of the nine numbers up there and stuff like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and buy, huh, what do we want to buy? I kind of want to fly today, so let's buy an elytra. That is number 202. So we'll go ahead, type in number 202. We will go ahead, take that piece of paper, plop it in there, push the button, and then we still have one more credit in the machine because we put in two diamonds. So let's go ahead and maybe buy, let's get the dragon breath potion. That is number 201. So let's put the paper in there. We'll type in 201. We will go ahead, drop the piece of paper in the dropper there, click the button, and our lighters are already out. 
We're gonna have to wait a little bit for the Dragon Breath Potion. And is it coming out soon? Hopefully, there we go. We got ourselves an Elytra and Dragon Breath. Awesome, that is, that is so cool. And finally, the machine can actually check and see if you have any credits left in there. And if you try to buy something without actually having any credits, well, the machine isn't even going to accept it. So um, keep in mind, we put in two diamonds and we got our two items back. So there aren't any credits in the machine right now. We don't have any diamonds left in there. We're gonna have to pay next time we wanna buy something. But let's go ahead and pretend we want to buy a golden block. Well, if we type in number 203, take our piece of paper back and try to send it in the dropper, it's not going to send. And that is because we don't have any credits left. But if we go ahead and put in our diamond, click the button, now what we can do is we can actually click this button and it will take it because we, you know, put in a diamond. So it's a great system, you know, it can check any errors and um, we should be receiving our golden block. Awesome, uh-oh, where did the golden block go? There it is, we got it, we got it. Now the only unfortunate side of this machine is the fact that the redstone behind it is absolutely ridiculous for the little shop store that it is in Minecraft. Yeah, there's a lot of redstone going on here, a lot of devices, a lot of guesses and checks and different tests that this machine has to run through. So there is a lot going on here. And for that reason, I would definitely not recommend building this thing in survival mode. So let's walk through this machine step by step and I will show you guys how it all works. Now the first step is going to be the payment system. Now for this, we have a diamond. So all you gotta do is put a diamond in there, push the button, and then what the machine does is it goes ahead and checks that you have indeed put a diamond into the machine. If you try to put in something that isn't a diamond, like a golden block, it's not going to accept that. It's only going to accept a diamond, and then what happens is it triggers this torch right here, which releases one item into this hopper. Now that is how I'm actually keeping track of the amount of diamonds that you enter the machine. So if we put this button one, two, three times, now there should be four blocks in this hopper back here. Yeah, there we go. So there's four blocks in the hopper and that's how I'm keeping track of how many diamonds are actually entered into the machine. Now the next thing that happens is the machine checks that you do indeed have a diamond entered in the machine. And if you do, then you will be able to enter in an item in this dropper. Once you enter an item in that dropper, it goes ahead, spits it up here. I then have an item elevator carrying the item all the way to the roof of the build where it then goes on this crazy wild snake of different hoppers. Now, allow me to explain what these different hoppers are doing up here at the top because it's very simple. All it's doing is the hopper is going left to right here as you can see so the item up oh, I didn't mean to break that but if we go ahead and put a golden block in here the items gonna travel along here along out back and so on so what's happening here is when the item travels here it's going to check if it has the paper number 303 and if it does then it's going to go in that hopper and that emits a redstone signal if it's not it moves on to the next guy and then it checks if it's paper number 302 and if it is, it lights up. If not, it moves on to the next guy. And that's what I'm doing for each of these. So that's how it checks the top row, the middle row, and then the bottom row. And then it just goes off into a little chest. Now, if it is number 203, all it does is trigger a line of repeaters, which goes ahead and turns on the dropper, which it, um, dispenses your item and you're good to go. So it's very simple, the redstone behind it, at least the concepts that I just explained um, hopefully you all have followed along and sort of understand how this machine's working because um, Yeah, the redstone behind it is a little bit ridiculous. You see this and you're just like whoa That is a lot of redstone. I don't even know what's happening um, Unfortunately, I don't really have any plans on compacting this design Honestly with my redstone limited knowledge I don't believe I could compact it further than what it is right now So I challenge all of you guys if you think you can actually compact this thing um, by all means go for it and maybe even link me a video in the comments or something seeing if you can actually compact this machine that would be really cool to find out and uh, maybe we could even do a tutorial on it eventually but it was a very fun redstone project if you guys want to download it and attempt to compact it there will be a download link down in the description so I highly encourage you guys go check that out have some fun um, you can even just copy it into your own personal redstone worlds and you know have some fun playing with it um other than that hopefully you all have enjoyed my name is crew thank you all for supporting my redstone creations and fun stuff like that and yeah i will see you guys 
in the next video. Adios.